All right, guys, we're live. This is the ornament I was looking at when I drew that one. We're going to have some fun. I hope we make it what you expect it to look like. I'm excited. Let's get started. All right, guys, welcome to Deliberately Creative. Hey, let's put on the other screen. Yeah, I've got stuff in my way again. <laughs> Hey guys, so I am really excited for this. I have been doing a little bit of practicing this morning, just this morning, just to see how we're going to do the background and I'll give you a sneak peek. Uh, what we're doing today will be kind of along these lines. Hmm, what do you think? We're going to use negative painting to do in the background and then we're going to we're going to have a lot more color. This was just really, really fast. But I was looking at this one when I started painting this one. You excited? I am. <laughs> so I do have the reference to put up on the screen when we start painting this also. I want to just quickly these designs that I'm painting this month all come out of my 31 creative, cute and creative hand-drawn winter ornaments to print in color. This is a quick little downloadable digital book that you can get on Teespring. A lot of people have been downloading it. Thank you for your support. Most of that is, um, all of it is going right back into getting better equipment, helping to support my studio, buy new materials, all that good stuff. So welcome, welcome, welcome to everyone coming in. Oh, Katie, drink your water. Just remember, drink your water and try and grab your, some time with your eyes closed. And hopefully the headache will go away quickly for you. Uh, so you can download this, print it on any kind of paper you want. If you're printing it on watercolor paper to do watercolor, make sure and print on the draft mode so that you get the least amount of ink on the paper. And then take your watercolor pen, or waterproof pen, sorry, waterproof pen. I'm using the Eco Pen. It's an inexpensive pen, comes in a big tube. You can get it in sets of 12 or sets of 20. And I like the size that is the 0.38. The black ink is waterproof and it's alcohol ink proof. So if you're somebody who likes to use markers to do things, it would work for that too. And oh, just released on my Amazon store is the physical coloring book that you can purchase. It's printed. It has a nice cover. Actually, the cover looks very similar. And it's ever so slightly different name, but it's still 31 cute and creative. It just says winter ornaments to color for every, for everyone to color. So yeah, let's get started. I am using, let's see here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's go to this one and bring up the reference. We don't need that pen. And what I want to do, you just ordered from Amazon. Oh, and the coloring book on Amazon is available worldwide. So if you're in the UK or Australia or Canada or wherever, you can order the book worldwide. So cool. I really like how this turned out with the negative painting. All I did was use green. I used variations of green. I might have added a little blue to some of the green. But since we have less room around the ornament, I just need to make sure that I get some dark right up around here. So we're going to go in and I'm just grabbing some different greens. So, and if you notice, I'm not even worried about mix. I'm mixing colors right here on the palette. I'm going to go ahead and get, see up here, it's really dark. So I just want to get some dark, dark, 
background put in. I want to make sure that I get enough dark right up to the glass so that we can have that difference between the shiny glass ball and the background. I'm making my lines kind of go the way the branches would be going. So, and remember, we're painting in the shadow. So it's a, it's, it's a different kind of painting in. It's fun though. You see, I haven't gone back and gotten much more color either. Now I'm going to go grab, I've got, I'm grabbing some blue and some green and it's different greens. And I'm just using the very, here, let's go to the side view so you can see I am not pushing down on my brush hardly at all. I'm, I'm just sort of tickling the paper and letting the paint flow off from the brush. Oh, move that over a little bit more. Letting the paint flow off from the brush. Kind of in a, it feels very oriental or Japanese style, Asian style painting for this right now. Getting many different colors in. I want some dark, I want some light. Sorry, I don't have the um, the reference up for you on this one, on this on this view. I forgot to add it to this view. You just want to make sure, like I said, that you've got some dark right near. And this is a case of less really is more, so I probably have gone in and put a little too much. I'm going to sort of soften out a little bit of the background. But I don't want to spend too much time in this, and I'm not putting any other colored ornaments in the, the picture. There we go. I want to get that corner out there a little bit more dark. Thank you. Yes, please hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I'm Stephanie from Deliberately Creative. <laughs> and I'm here to spread joy and positivity and help you see that being creative doesn't have to be scary. You could, whoopsie. I slid over a little bit again. I want to add a little bit more dark right in here and then I'm going to dry this and say we're done with the background because really what I want to spend my time on here is the ball. I want to have a ball with the ball. There we go. I'm going to darken up that corner. So are you guys enjoying your holiday holiday wander through these ornaments? Is this a fun project that you're enjoying or are you here just for the glass and you've never been here before? Here for this class, first time? If you're here for the first time, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. I like that. And I am, like I said, I'm trying to not do too much putzing around here, but you know, it's really hard. I think I want to just stop right there and dry it. Let's see. Except that this part, part right here needs a bit more dark. So before I dry, thank you so much. Before I dry, I'm going to bring a little bit more dark right up in here.
using I used the same three the same three colors I used this sort of olivey green another natural green and sort of a I don't know what kind of a blue that is sort of an ultramarine ish blue And I just kept picking it up straight from the palette with the brush and I was mixing the colors on the palette on this fan palette and this is just a fan palette inexpensive watercolors they're available on Amazon lots of places sell them just look for where it says 42 colors and it has superior written right here if it says superior it doesn't matter which um, reseller is selling it it's all the same watercolor that I'm using and then it says watercolor and it has um, a type of Asian script that I am not sure which kind it is. I believe it's probably Chinese, but there it is. A little bit darker right down there. See, you could go and play and just have a lot of fun. But like I said, I'm not paying that close attention to the background. We want the we want the ball to be the focus. So we just needed to have something to make that ball stand out. I'm going to dry this. And thank you guys so much. Yay. All right. So remember that you can do this any way you want. And I mean, we can, we could obviously, we could go less is more <laughs> that I love the kind of watercolor effect that we've got on this, this ball right here. It's that sort of vintage, modern vintage type of look. I'm going to try for that here. I don't know. You're enjoying the whole process of these. It calms you. Thank you. I find that I'm so much more calm after I have had a chance to do some of these also. Ooh, a fun and gorgeous watercolor palette that had different types of colors, like tropical colors. Um, I've seen I've actually seen sets. I, I don't think I have any um, marked in my, in my shop. I've seen sets of these palettes with pastel colors and um, which, you know, it's not the standard colors that you have right here, but, and pastels can be very tropical. Yeah, sometimes you just have to say enough and stop. Yeah, do an Amazon search, definitely. If you are going to Amazon, if you click, click one of my Amazon links when you're heading there, then it will help me in the long run <laughs> because my um, when you click on the Amazon link from mine, it uh, sort of carries along a little tag that you clicked on this link to get to Amazon. So if you make any purchase from anything, it doesn't even, you could go buy laundry soap, you know, anything. And um, I will get credit for you going to Amazon. So I am going to look at this. So things to look at here. This whole ball has kind of a golden cast to it. So I am going to put a thin layer of yellow ochre over the whole thing but very very thin because this these brightest spots is the color that it's going that color so I'm going to leave it very light but I want the undertone of the whole thing to be this sort of softly golden color so I'm grabbing just some yellow ochre because it's a warmer um, softer color are you talking about your your watercolor powders again? That's so cool. Layering is something layering is something that you just started. 
what a difference in your attempt at painting. Absolutely. Layering really, really helps. So I am going on and going to just paint over the whole thing with this yellow ochre very lightly. If a little bit of the green from the background ends up pulling in, that's okay. This is going to be my very first color, under color, not, not too strong. You want it to be light. And if you look at the, look at this, even though it's got a lot of light bouncing around, we've got a bit of a darker area down here at the bottom and a lighter area up here at the top. If you kind of look at it, it's really light up there and it's really dark down here. Let's see. Let's see, it's really dark there and it's really light there. But then you have, if you look at that, the middle is brighter than the very bottom. See? So start looking at things first in general areas of light and dark. So we want to make sure that the top area over here stays lighter. The bottom area down here can get a little bit darker. So I'm going to go ahead and grab just a touch more of the that yellow ochre and I'm going to bring it in down here at the bottom and just start giving us a little bit of a darker base. We and that's just what it is. It's just the base. We're going to be bringing in other colors on top of it, but already you're starting to see you're getting shape. Yeah, the cool thing, let's see, pretty excellent paints with the parrot. Yes. Um, Lindsay, the frugal crafter, she has commented and tested so many watercolors. So if you're if you're interested in watercolors, check out Lindsay, the frugal crafter. She does amazing watercolor reviews and she has binders full and she really likes the pretty excellent paints. So, and she's done a lot of the, um, there's a lot of the different watercolor palettes that are the small ones, the, you know, the little half size 12 count from um, Prima that they do different sets of paints that are tropical or fashion or confections. So they, they, and they're pretty, pretty reasonable. I think they're in the 20 to $30 range. And for watercolor, that's pretty darn reasonable. Good morning, Linda. Yeah, Lorianne, th great suggestion. All right, so now I want to dry this. And there's going to be a lot of drying because you don't want these colors to, you don't want the colors to just sort of blur across. You want to give definition and so that you have those facets. So most of what we're going to be doing is working in triangles and half triangles. We're not going to be coloring, you know, whole squares. So this is going to, this is going to be a little bit of a journey, but it's a very um, calm and peaceful kind of journey. It's not, if you're feeling stressed when you're painting, you need to put the paints away and, or, or do something really big and abstract. <laughs> Ranjin. So Gina is in Florida. I am here in Washington State. And we have people from all over the world. If you guys want to drop in where you're from, that would be awesome. It's always fun to see where in the world we are. Yeah, the the travel aspect of these watercolors is amazing. Boom. They fit really small. You can put a water brush 
right there. This set actually came with a water, I think it came with this water brush. The water brush usually has a cap. I lose the caps. <laughs> what can I say? So now what I want to do is just get out a variety of color. We will be using a, a little bit of red, a little bit of violet. There's going to be more of the gold and there'll be some browns in here too. And that red will be pink because we've got, we have bouncing light on these facets. So when you're going in, you kind of just choose a choose a big diamond or you know choose a diamond with four triangles in it and just start coloring you see how this right here this one in the center has a blue and then it's got which is a half and then it's got a really dark brown and then it's got maybe a goldy color and then this might just be the left leftover color from right on the ornament. So I'm going to say that this right here, any of these little squares is going to work for that or the diamond. It doesn't matter. Choose and just start working in. So I'm going to grab a touch of that blue. I'm going to be brave and I'm going to say that Which one? Which one? I, I think I'm going to say that this one right here, there, just halfway with a kind of a gray, gray blue. We're going to zoom in. Let's see if we can zoom in on that side camera. Let's see what happened there. There we go. Had to dolly that in. Oh, Okay, I need to put that um, picture on this one if we're going to the side side view. So, um, get, let's see here. I just need to get the picture brought in. Browse. Give me the picture. I have to go to the right folder. There we go. And now I can turn that one on. Oh, it's sideways. I need to transform that and rotate clockwise. There you go. Now we've got that in there, so you've got it. We've got that blue there. I'm gonna say that there's just in, lots of different places here I see little pieces of blue so I'm just going to start taking that darker color and dropping it into a few spots and it could be a little confusing and don't worry about it it's going to work out it's going to look really cool yeah thank you you know, we can do all kinds of fun things with just a little bit of paint. And remember, it's just paint. So if it doesn't end up working out the way you're expecting it to, just relax. If you've got the, the downloadable book, you can just print out another one. You know, if you've got the coloring book, flip it over and work from the backside you can see through the paper somewhat on those on those pages and you could just try try doing some colors from the backside or use it as a traceable and trace it off onto another piece of paper so i'm looking at that going triangle facing in and if you look here guys i'm not filling those in all the way i'm staying staying back away from the black line a little bit and just dropping some colors in making myself happy with it. I'm going to bring in a little bit of this kind of brown tone, I think. Down here at the bottom, I want to start darkening up some of those. 
This is going to look more like the, hopefully, more like the reference, which is a glass ball, but it's a pressed glass ball versus a, or, or a mold-made glass ball versus a cut crystal glass ball. Um, I found a, a picture of cut crystal, but they didn't have quite as many facets in it. <laughs> uh, it already looks good. Oh, good. I'm so glad. You know, we're just filling things in. And as I said, you don't have to be too... You don't have to be too particular on making sure that this square right here has this triangle, blah, blah, blah. Don't worry about it. What you're going for is dark on the bottom half and light on the top half. And if it's facing the bottom, it's going to catch some of that darker light. You see? Breaking it down. So if it's on the light side of the or if it's on the top half and it's facing up away from the it's really hard to say that isn't it it's hard to explain but basically because these are dipped in this is in shadow and that's in light this is where the lights coming from so if the lights coming from the top see how boom 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 you've got more shadows even though it's in the bright area So that's something to think about, isn't it? And sometimes the act of explaining it to somebody else really helps me figure out what I'm looking at. So I'm looking at that going, I want some more shadows. Now, something else to, to make note of, my grid is going straight up and down and the grid on here is curved or is slanted. So if I really want to use this, I will hold it this way. Then I can see these more up and down where the triangles are because it, it matches a little bit better. So really dark. I'm gonna go really dark. I need more dark. There we go. Ooh, gonna be brave. There we go. So sometimes you just have to take a moment to look at it and go, ooh, what am I looking at? And remember, I'm not going all the way to the edges. You see, I'm sort of putting these colors in in splots. Splots? Um, splat <laughs> Splashy bits. I'm not color th coloring them in close. And that way it also keeps the colors from blending together. We have some lines between. Learning gradations and layers. Just keep going over with another color or shade. Yeah, use your eyes and look at what's, what's on your reference if you've got a reference. References are key. They are key. They are if you're doing something that you want to feel like it lives in light, in the, in the real world. I like that ornament. I think that it lives in the real world. I want this one to feel like it lives in this world. Yep, you've got we've got a PDF and we've got a coloring book. So there's the coloring book on Amazon, the link. And if you want the downloadable digital copy that you can print as many times as you want on whatever paper you want. We have it on Teespring. 
as a downloadable instant download so you can download it and start using it right away. The coloring book from Amazon, you do have to wait a couple days for it to arrive. I think I'm going to go in. I want to I want to put a couple of these, ooh. Yeah. A couple of these little sparks of of red before I've run out of spaces to put it. And what that is, is that is other ornaments on the tree, hanging in the area. Reflecting. There's a very soft kind of pinkish tone now. See, I'm letting the paint just run out on my brush. Let's go back to the top down. That makes it easier to see. But you can see how we're just putting it in just putting it in and letting the edges sort of be hard if you think about it the colors that we're putting on there's light bouncing all over the place that's part of these facets like this is that the light bounces all around we just look at it and go hmm I wonder what what happens if I go and I'm letting the colors dry just so they have hard edges. We're not doing this as a soft and flowy type of ornament. I'm going to grab some of this kind of a golden ochre color. I'm going to put some line. This is sort of that highlight top line on a few spaces so that I know where my where that top edge is and then we've got a real bright we've got a little tiny tiny touch of pink in here This is one that I kind of do have to concentrate more on though. And that's nice because sometimes having something to concentrate on takes us out of ourselves for a little while and allows our brain to just focus on what it's doing. Right now, what we're doing, we are putting some color in, we are making some choices and these choices are not hard choices in the long run. These choices are choices that are giving us an opportunity to be in control. I am working in with very dry paint, very dry brush, just enough, just wet enough to pick up some color. But you notice I have not been going back and putting more paint on here or more water on my brush. I'm letting the brush sort of dry out as I go. And if you end up getting too dark or, you know, too much pigment, too dark, you can try to lift out color or you can just go in with a little bit of gouache or a colored pencil. You can use colored pencil on these things to sharpen up lines make things a little bit more detailed. The act of putting light colors and dark colors in the same sort of diamond area gives you that bouncy color look. All right. <laughs> I wish that I could go up to Canada right now. 
Well, actually, I wish that I could go up to Canada in the spring. So maybe that will happen. Maybe, maybe Canada, maybe we'll be able to open up things a little bit if people start getting more well and all of those good things. We're here for positivity though. So my positive thought is, oh, we're going to get through this guys. So I'm just going along and picking up different browns and darkening up spaces, lightening up space, leaving other spaces lighter. See, by putting a darker color in, it makes the ones around it look lighter. I'm glad that I did the, you see now where we had that darker part down here at the bottom and the lighter area at the top, even though we're putting some dark spots in here, it's still lighter. And it gives us that sort of shiny gold ball type of look. Let's zoom back out on this and see how it's looking. Let's see how we're feeling about it. Sometimes we have to zoom out so that we can really see what we're looking at. Looking at that, going, ooh. You, now you can really see the light side and the dark side. And I'm, I'm looking at this going, I need a few more of these up here to be darker, just along an edge. Leaving an edge, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Zooming out like that helps. See down here at the bottom, these are, these are all much more dark. We'll zoom in here again in just a second. Sometimes you need to step back and the way I'm stepping back is by zooming out. So what do you think? Are you guys enjoying how this is coming out? I'm gonna use some of that darker color up here. Leaving some spots of light, putting dark underneath of that, that cap. Get in even darker. Don't be afraid to push some of the contrast. Really dark, really light. Really, really, really right next to each other. Ooh, I like that. Okay, we're gonna zoom in on that. I like Vancouver Island, but I also like it over towards Kelowna because I have friends there. Um, let's see, Hope, BC is a cute little town. Lots of statues and, and uh, public art. And it's a little town. It's on our way when we are going to other places. We've never stayed in Hope. We've just driven through it. Okay, I'm going to pick up a little bit of water now. Thank you, Sue. Ah, you were in Chilliwack. Yep, I've been to Chilliwack. I'm going to grab a little bit brighter And this is one that when you're tired of it, you're done. You don't have to, you don't have to color in every single, every single triangle because we put that layer of color down to begin with. I'm 
looking down here, I want this little bit right here to be much darker. So, much darker. But still leaving some light. See? Give it give it room to have sparkle. Let the sparkle shine. We are sparkling this up. We are getting all kinds of light bouncing around. And really, I'm using a lot of brown. There was some blue and a little bit of magenta. And even in some of those ones that were blue, I'm putting a little bit of brown. Leave some areas next to the lines, though, so that you get that break. You get that highlight showing up. Yeah, this is, by having the, um, the design already drawn, it really frees you up and allows you to use it like a coloring book. So you, or a coloring page, you're not, you don't have to make those decisions this time. You can just make the decisions on where you're putting color. And I will link the, I don't have the picture from Unsplash linked in this. I will have it linked right after the show. But that ornament is from Unsplash. A really good site that is, has free to use artwork for artists. And let's see. Let's see if I have, I don't know that I still have it up on my page. But I might be able to get it real quick. I'm letting this dry for a minute. But, eh, it's not coming up quickly. I'm not going to worry about it. So looking at that, going, we're a little bit light here. So I think I'm going to just add a little bit of color, but not a lot. Yeah. <laughs> well, we are Star Tra uh, Star Wars fans here in this house. So, but in the Mori po Povich type voice, that's interesting. <laughs> but yeah, the dark side and the light side of the ornament. I can honestly say I am not your father. <laughs> Just grabbing a little bit more dark. And rem realize here, I still, I've only dipped my the tip of my brush in the water like two or three times. I'm going to put some dark right down like that. You can split your little triangles in half and do like a little bit darker, half that triangle and half this one. It really and truly is up to you. I want more of that yellow ochre down here, I think. Sometimes, sometimes you feel like a nut. Uh-huh. I went there. Hey, at least I'm not singing at you today, right? Those who were here yesterday, you got me singing. I sang happy birthday songs. <laughs> but not the happy birthday song. Bouncing light. 
Now when we go in with a we can go in with a little bit of gouache and really brighten up a few of these triangles really darken up. I need to darken this one. Let's see this one right here. This uh, this sort of like diamond right right there. I want to darken more of that up. So I'm going to say Hmm, that diamond, there. But just look where the light is bouncing. And if you need to, just look at one square. See where you've got three, you actually have four tones in here. You've got lightest, medium, darker, and darkest. You see that? Break it down. Just break it down. And the one right below it, you have lightest, darker, darker, darkest. So you can work your way around that way if you need to. I'm just letting it go. Oh my goodness, shortbread cookies. Oh, yes. I am I am a cookie monster. I have asked my I asked my dad what what really means Christmas? What would if it if he didn't have this kind of cookie, it would not be Christmas. And he said gingerbread boys. I was surprised by that. I thought that his I knew that it was a gingerbread, but I thought that it was the um, the soft crinkly gingerbread type cookie and he said nope it's gingerbread boys if I don't have gingerbread boys it's not really Christmas or it just doesn't feel really like Christmas I'm like good to know so you know there's going to be some gingerbread boys being made in my house so start darkening okay so I've got light, darker, for my son it's the chocolate crinkle cookies, those real fudgy brownie type cookie that has the powdered sugar on the outside and is all crackly. My mom's is the uh, Russian tea cake, Mexican wedding cake. It's the ground almonds, um, basically a shortbread cookie, but it's a ground almond cookie um, with some flour and powdered sugar, and then it's rolled into balls, and um, after they're baked, you roll them in powdered sugar then let them while they're hot. Then you roll them in powdered sugar when they're cold, and they look like little snowballs. And that's her favorite cookie. Mine is the... Okay, I'm dipping in just a touch of water, wiping most of it off. Mine is the, for Christmas, it, it really is Christmas if I've got my chocolate, or my, my cream wafer cookies. And because I'm gluten-free, I have to make them, so I know what's in them. And cream wafer cookies, basically the sugar is on the outside which is really nice because you can control how much sugar is on them. They're basically a pastry type dough made with butter and flour, a little bit of salt and vanilla, and then um, let's see here, just looking. I think I want a little touch of red showing up right here. There, a little bit there. Bouncing a little more red down in here. I think I, I need to go in and start pushing some of the, some of the contrasty lines, like maybe a deeper line down in.
coming out. That, that feels good. So then that's going up and then this one would be down in. And I'm going to take some sparkly, sparkly pen probably. So that was the one that was going down. That's going down. Yeah, see, I have to start concentrating when I'm doing that, which is fun. I, I like having things that I concentrate on. Oh, I haven't made any of the cookies yet. Oh, yeah, uh, cookie swaps are, are, are fun things, but those, I don't know how you would do one during a, um, <laughs> during a pandemic, you know, unless everybody ma was ma mailing cookies to everybody, or you were doing like the, um, well, I guess you could do a, a, with a small group of friends, you could do a, Everybody goes to their, one at a time, comes into the yard or the front porch, <laughs> puts their cookies down, and then everybody draws an, and everybody has drawn a number. And then they get to come up on the porch and fill up their cookie tin with cookies from each, of, each person who dropped off cookies. And then go back towards their car their car or stay really spread spread way way far apart but part of the cookie swap is the camaraderie the getting to hang out with your friends sing christmas carols eat eat cookies definitely eating cookies well see how this is starting to get some Get some shape and de definition, dimension, layering up the colors, letting them be bright, be, be dark, putting a few spots where it gets really dark right down in. Yeah, no cookie swaps this year. I don't really go to cookie swaps, but it's, I, I've been except for when I was working at the school, we would have a cookie swap every once in a while. Usually we just did secret Santas at work. So many of us have um, food allergies that it's, it's really hard now to do cookie swaps. Even if there wasn't a pandemic, it's really hard to do a cookie swap. because of, you know, like I'm gluten free. I really can't go to a cookie swap. I'd only get to have my own cookies. All right, I think I want to start putting a little bit, just a few touches of gouache. Ooh yeah, biscotti, hmm, love biscotti. Yeah, so <clears throat> I, I am, um, definitely a cookie monster person. Now I just put a little bit of gouache on my, on my thing right here. And I'm going to look at this and go, there is a really bright spot right there by putting the brighter white right here. It makes these other colors go a little bit darker looking. There's On top of on on the top edge of some of these spaces where it's really dark, there's actually a very bright highlight. But it can be a broken light. It doesn't have to be. Yeah, 
it doesn't have to be a, a super hard line. I might go ahead and I really like the tip on this one. But I think my paint was just a little too dry. So I've got some water in my brush so I can thin down my paint just a little bit. If you don't have gouache, you can use acrylic paint. You could use a Prismacolor white pencil, white colored pencil on here. Then you could have your really sharp point on your pencil and get your, get your lines in. Just kind of choose, choose a set of, of lines that you really want to have your, your bright colors show up on or your dark show up. See, by putting just a little line in, it starts to pop it up. And even down here, now, like this one right here, I'm going to say this was, this needed to be a light color down there. And this one right here is going to be a light. You can start splashing a little bit of sparkle around. Take and put half of some of those dark ones. And that starts to give you more sparkle and light. And on some of your really bright light ones, just make it even brighter and lighter. Do it on half. Give yourself some sparkle. And you can take a white pen and do this, you don't have to do it with a brush. You know, maybe I'll do that. I'm gonna rinse the gouache out of my brush. This is looking really pretty though. I'm, I'm very pleased. Oh, I do need to get that uh, cap up there. I'm just taking a little bit of the black again, very lightly. Leave some highlights and then take a little bit more concentrated color and put a little bit of some shadow in. See, it doesn't, doesn't require too much to do that. Let's see. Maybe I'll put a little bit of that really dark color down. But you see how you're not coloring in every square perfectly and precisely. And you're doing it as triangles, not squares anyway. But, you know, you knew what I meant, right? Let's put a little, let's dry it and put a little bit of white pen, I think. <laughs> There we go. Yeah, you know, so look at this. We we were able to we were able to do this pretty close. I mean, it's not perfect. It doesn't have to be. Just, I just want it to be dry before I use the pen. There we go. Yeah, thank you so much. I am trying to get to 100,000. Gina, you are so awesome for reminding. If you like what you see here, please click that subscribe button and the like button. We are trying to get to the 100,000. I really would love to get there for Christmas. I think that would be like the most awesome Christmassy gift. But no matter what, you guys are awesome and being here with you really is the best yeah see you can clean up lines with your pen you can actually clean up lines you can go in and give it those little extra highlights which is one of the reasons why doing this with um, 
sort of a looser style inside of those triangles gives you the opportunity to put a little bit of sparkle in with your pen. Just don't try and go too overboard. I need to always remind myself that that is what I, the focus here is not the white pen. But I do see, you know, a couple spots that could could use a bit more light. I will do that. And I can just put it in with the pen. This is the Signo Uniball White. I do have a set of the new white gel pens from Arteza. I know some people have said that they weren't as happy with them. I haven't tried them very much yet. I've just drawn on some black paper and they seem to work fine for me. So we'll see. I need to test them with going over colored pencil and things like that because this uniball pen oh my goodness it goes over everything let's see you know I see something here up here in the back corner back edge I'm going to take some really dark brown I want some really dark brown right there And this is where you can work on it till you're tired of it and then stop, come back later and go, ooh, yeah, we could use a little bit more color there or we could bump up the contrast. That is where this really shines is that it's the contrast between the light and the dark. All right. So yeah, liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing. Oh my goodness. Share your artwork with me. Share my channel with your friends. Share my videos with your friends. I know that we have a really sweet group of people that are coming in whenever I go live and that just is making my heart so happy. because they're finding it very restful to be here. We're a very caring group of people. I'm gonna put a little bit of highlight right out here because that's going to make it look like the edge of the, the ball. And then I'm going to take my brush that has just a tiny bit of water on it and soften that white because see what happens when you do that? You still have the highlight, but it doesn't look quite like it was drawn on. And if it's too bright in a spot, you can always soften it with just a touch of water while the paint or while the uh, pigment ink is still wet all right let's back out of this take the tape off and see what it looks like i'm so excited oh all right let's back this out come on sorry i'm doing all my focusing and everything. All right, so now take the tape off. That just makes it look so much more finished when we take the tape off. And because I've dried this once, the tape already was starting to lift up. Come on, be really good if I could just grab a hold of it though. <laughs> Oh, it just makes it feel so much more finished. So, how'd we do, guys? I think. Wow, look at this. And look at the, re the reference right up there. I don't think I did too bad. 
I hope that you try this, that you share it with me on your social media. Make sure that you are sharing it all over the place. Pin your artwork. Pin it on Pinterest. Pin my videos on Pinterest also. That really helps. And remember that I am going to be doing all 31 of these designs this month. I'm going through them in order and tomorrow is going to be the Cardinal. I think that's going to be fun. Here's the actual and I am I am painting on the actual artwork. These are the printed not printed. These are I drew this during my live 31 winter designs. It says am I nuts? <laughs> It was on November 30th, and I will be i-carding that up here at the top so that you can click on it. I do have a playlist of all of the ornaments going in and all of the other winter designs that I've done this year, too. I have a coloring book on Amazon with this cover on it. Yep, all 31 designs. So if you don't have a printer and you want to be able to color along, it takes about three days to get it at least here in the United States. So I should have my copy on Wednesday. <laughs> and I'll be able to show the real copy to you guys. Thank you. Remember, go out and do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. I want to see you back here again really soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>